Uh, there we go. Hey there, Facebook. Good evening. It's great to be with y'all tonight. Today is January 8th. It is Friday. And my name is Mick. I'm an Episcopal priest. I serve two parishes in a town called Ludington, Michigan. And um, every night, uh, the people of the parishes I serve, that would be Emmanuel Lutheran and Grace Episcopal, um, well, we come together every night around nine o'clock and well, we just have a time of check-in. And we share an adult beverage together, perhaps. We say some prayers. Uh, we say the devotion, or we read a devotion from the Lutheran tradition. We um, say the nightly office from the Episcopal tradition. And basically, we just use this time to check in with each other. So, if this is your first time with us, welcome. It is great to have you here with us. And uh, in tonight's video, we're going to be talking about first impressions. Um... Are they a bad thing or are they a good thing? Like a lot of things in life, the answer truly lies in between there somewhere, doesn't it? But we'll get into that in just a minute, okay? Uh, we also read scripture together, so if you want to grab your Bibles uh, ahead of time, we'll be getting to that in a minute. I uh, just want to give you a heads up on that, okay? But in the meantime, why don't we go ahead and check in with our day, see how things are going. Today's Friday. That is my day off. Uh, so basically, I just pretty much stayed around the house today. Didn't do a whole heck of a lot. Had to go into town once to uh, pick up pizza for tonight because Friday is pizza night. And, well, for the rest of the family, it's pizza night. Um, I've been back on my, my keto thing again, so I can't be having the bread. Uh, tonight, what am I enjoying with you? Straight up cup of coffee. That's all I'm having tonight. So, um, salute. Good on you. Why don't we share tonight? Um, well, let's uh, let's share if anybody's having something or doing something special over this weekend. Um, just that simple. If somebody is needing to travel, if somebody is, uh, well, any anybody having special plans for the weekend? That's what we'll check in with tonight. Okay. All right. So why don't we go ahead and see who's with us? Sharon. Sharon Walton is with us. Hey, Sharon. Great to have you here, Miss Jenny from Howell. I think my neighbor Randall may be joining us tonight. Hey, that's awesome. That's fantastic, Miss Jenny. Thank you for, for sharing this time with him. That's awesome. Mike Burns says hi from Mike and Priscilla down in Alabama, wintering in Alabama. Hi, guys. Great to have you with us. The I-beams from the ranch. Let's see. Good evening from Kathy and Fisherman Ben. Well, Yes, he's a fisherman, but was he successful at all today? That's that's all I'm asking. <laughs> Joyce Uziak and Jack down in Orange Beach, also in Alabama. Great to have you guys with us tonight. Hi, guys. Wintering there, by the way. Um, And Mike Burns is accusing me of having a boring drink. Really? I didn't tell you what was in my coffee. No, actually, it's just straight up coffee. <laughs> that's it. You're right. It's a boring drink tonight. That's, you want to know why, Mike? Here, I've got to clean off my windowsill, but I'm going to turn the camera around so you can see what I've been doing. And it's a visual reminder of, of every night spent with you guys over the past month and a half, okay? But here, let me turn it around so you can see my windowsill. You'll also see my setup here. Starts down that end with Jack Daniels and Advent. And goes this way, goes underneath the lamp, goes all the way over there with O'Donnell's. And it's in front of me every night as I'm talking to you guys. So it's a visual reminder to me. I needed to dry out, Mike. <laughs> you know, that's a bad way to start rumors. <laughs> really, that was the extent of what, I mean, I have a nightcap with you guys. But it has been pretty consistent. So... Yeah, it's coffee for me tonight, all right? <laughs> there you go. You guys got a glimpse behind the camera today. That's cool. Uh, let's see. Mike Burns uh, we just ended with you. Jenny Gray said that should be Randy. Oh, excuse me. Thank you very much, Jenny. Randy, if I see him in, I'll make sure to, to greet him. Dottie Eastway is here with us. Hey, Dottie, good to have you, which means your husband Todd is with you right there by your side. 
Kathy Ibeam says, yes, we had a great fish dinner tonight. Yum. That's awesome. What, did you go to McDonald's or something? Um, that fisherman of yours. That, no, no, I, I can't say that. He's He provides quite well. Um, Mike Burns. I throw away the evidence. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, I probably should have done that before this video ends up in, in front of my bishop. You know, that, that would be a very bad thing. <laughs> oh, Mike, those are words of wisdom right there. I should listen to my elders. <laughs> hey, uh, if you have your Bibles with you and you want to go ahead and turn, we're sticking to the book of Samuel tonight. Um, we were in the beginning of Samuel last night with Samuel's call. Now tonight, we're further in the book. We're at chapter 16, okay? We're going to be looking at verses 1 through 13. Samuel is a prophet um, of Israel. He's the prophet um, during the first Israeli kingship, okay? Saul is the king. Um, Israel had wanted a king like the other nations around her. Up until this point, Israel was, well, well, under the kingship of God, but there were, um, judges who were in charge of settling accounts within, um, within the land of Israel. Okay. So now we, we've, we've passed the time of the judges. Now we're into the kingdoms. And Saul is the first king. Samuel is the prophet during all this time. Okay? So tonight we're going to read about, well, later on in Samuel's story. King Saul had originally, you know, tried to honor God and then went his own way. And now the kingship was going to be taken from Saul. And so we're going to be reading about Samuel being giving, given some direction by God as to the next king of Israel. Um, so why don't, we, why don't we go ahead and get into that? Let's see. Todd asks if you were feeling ill since you were having coffee. <laughs> see, Mike, that's why I'm having coffee, <laughs> because rumors are really easy to spread around. No, Todd, I'm fine, man. Okay. <laughs> but thank you for asking. Oh my goodness. First Samuel 16, 1 through 13. Y'all ready? If you don't have your Bibles with you, don't worry about it. I'm about to read it to you right now anyway. Okay? All right. The Lord said to Samuel, How long will you continue to feel sorry for Saul? I have rejected him as king of Israel. Fill your container with olive oil and go. I am sending you to Jesse, who lives in Bethlehem because I have chosen one of his sons to be king. But Samuel said, If I go, Saul will hear the news and will try to kill me. The Lord said, Take a young calf with you. Say, I have come to offer a sacrifice to the Lord. Invite Jesse to the sacrifice. Then I will tell you what to do. You must appoint the one I show you. Samuel did what the Lord told him to do. When he arrived in Bethlehem, the elders of Bethlehem shook with fear. They met him and asked, Are you coming in peace? Samuel answered, Yes, I come in peace. I have come to make a sacrifice to the Lord. Set yourselves apart to the Lord and come to the sacrifice with me. Then he set Jesse and his sons apart to the Lord, and he invited them to come to the sacrifice. When they arrived, Samuel saw Eliab. And he thought, surely the Lord has appointed this person standing here before me. But the Lord said to Samuel, don't look at how handsome Eliab is or how tall he is, because I have not chosen him. God does not see the same way people see. People look at the outside of a person, but the Lord looks at the heart. Then Jesse called Abinadab, and told him to pass by Samuel. Samuel said, The Lord has not chosen this man either. Then Jesse had Shema pass by. But Samuel said, No, the Lord has not chosen this one. Jesse had seven of his sons pass by Samuel. But Samuel said to him, The Lord has not chosen any of these. 
Then he asked Jesse, Are these all the sons you have? Jesse answered, I still have the youngest son. He is out taking care of the sheep. Samuel said, Send for him. I will not sit down to eat until he arrives. So Jesse sent and had his youngest son brought in. He was a fine boy, tanned and handsome. The Lord said to Samuel, Go, appoint him, because he is the one. So Samuel took the container of olive oil and poured it on Jesse's youngest son to anoint, appoint him in front of his brothers. From that day on, the Lord's spirit worked in David. Samuel then went back to Ramah. <laughs> the devotion for tonight is entitled, Always Full of Surprises. One's first impressions play an important role. They offer a starting point, a point of comparison that informs learning. However, when one sees them as the end point, therein lies a problem. Experience teaches that while initial impressions can be spot on, they are often found to be incomplete and lacking. The path to wisdom is found in withholding judgment until one can see the complete picture in a way that can lead to a wonderful discovery. In today's story of God's choice of David as king of Israel, all present have their ideas as to who should be king. They look to outward appearances, probably nuanced by individual preference and bias, as humans are wont to do. Samuel and those gathered must have been quite surprised that God's choice was a youngster who was not even considered important enough to be invited to the anointing in the first place. Who knows what surprises God has in store for us? this day. And the prayer that goes with the devotion, surprising God, give me insight to not rush to judgment. Shed light so I may see things as you do. Amen. And the prayer concern for tonight, that judges and juries serving today may not rush to judgment. You know how they say confession is good for the soul? I have a confession for you guys tonight. And it has to do with this very subject. Yes, true. Confession is good for the soul. Bad for the reputation, but good for the soul. Okay? This is an area I really need to work on. Because first impressions to me, or uh, not even first impressions, but if I have had experience with an individual... And that experience has not been a really good experience. Sometimes if information comes to me from that individual that that person may think is helpful or useful to me and, and passes it along with good intent, sometimes I still look at who is sending me the information. And I make a judgment call about that. And... It's not always the best thing to do because I tie the person or the um, the conflict maybe that I've had with that person in the past and I attach it to the information that they're trying to pass on. I consider the source and sometimes I make a judgment about the information when really what I'm doing is I'm still judging the person from the run-in I had with them in the past, I'm not letting it go the way I should. Now, this isn't necessarily a bad thing. We are, this is human nature. We make initial judgments and we act according to those initial, um, I say judgments, but, but maybe that word is too strong. Uh, let me put it this way. If my family and I are walking down the street in Grand Rapids, okay? And uh, I don't know why I'm picking on Grand Rapids just to say that it's the biggest city that's around here, okay? <laughs> because what I'm about to, the story I'm about to paint is, is, anyway, I'm getting lost in the weeds here. If my family and I are walking down a street anywhere, and a man runs around the corner of a building towards us, and let's say he's, um, 
he's got tattoos all over the place, all on his face, on his neck, and he's big, and he's carrying a chain in one hand, and he's carrying a bat in another, all right? And he's running around the corner, and he's running towards us. I make a judgment right there. I don't know this man from Adam, okay? I see him running. I see the tattoos on his face. I see the chain in his hand and the bat in the other. I see him running at my family. I make a judgment right there on the spot and I put myself between that person that I have judged a threat and my family. In that case, it's a good thing, right? That's a that's an awareness mindset. That's a that's a protection. That's what I'm supposed to do as a husband and as a father, okay? The problem is when I, I, I discount anything about that individual, let's say in this case, the man's being chased by a rabid dog, okay? And he's not a threat to my family. He's trying to get away from a dog, okay? I don't know why he has a chain and a bat. I just picked those things, okay? Um, I didn't, I don't necessarily have all the information, but what information I do have at the moment, I take steps according to the information I have. Now, if I always stayed right there with that initial impression, maybe any assistance that I could give the guy won't go to him because I've already judged him. He's a threat. He's always going to be a threat. He will, he's a threat now. He's a threat later. He'll die a threat to me and my family when maybe that's not the case at all. I know I'm, I'm saying something extreme here, but, but just put it in everyday life. I've had a run-in with somebody and we disagreed about something and, and now I have another interaction with them. And because of that disagreement on another topic on another day years ago, that person is this to me and I've put them in that box in that category and I will learn nothing from them anymore. Well, that's not good, is it? You see, first impressions, they're important. They offer a starting point, a point of comparison that informs learning. However, when one sees them as an end point, there lies the problem. I think there's a lot of wisdom in that one. I know there is for me, for what I have to learn. Well, that's what I get out of the devotion tonight, guys. You may get something completely different, and that's okay. Hey, we're going to turn our attention right now then to... Um, our prayer list. Let me see if anybody else. Nope, we're good to go. Okay. Uh, Sheila Ray is in. She said good evening to all. Hey, Sheila. Great to have you with us. Friday, we turn our attention to people who um, uh, people who have asked for prayers and people we're praying with and for. And Friday, we start with um, uh, with Tim and praying for his daughter Aubrey. Um, but not only for Aubrey, uh, for all um, freshmen in college this year, as this is a most, most unusual year. Uh, Sonia, uh, I think I mentioned her last night, but again, for her family and the decisions they have to make together. Steve, I just saw you come in here. Hey, man, uh, we're st still praying for your parents, brother. I know that your dad's out of the hospital, um, and thanks for the updates that you continually give, but we're praying with you for your parents, okay? All right. And for my friend Michelle, who has a friend, who, um, well, her friend needs to make some decisions, is examining her life, and, well, we're looking for God's guidance for her, okay? So that's how we join Michelle in praying for her friend. All right. Then let us now turn our attention to the last thing that we do together, which is say the nightly office from the Episcopal tradition. It's called Compline, and it begins with the invitatory. The Lord Almighty grant us a peaceful night and a perfect end. Amen. And the psalm appointed for tonight is Psalm 31. In you, O Lord, have I taken refuge. Let me never be put to shame. Deliver me in your righteousness. Incline your ear to me. Make haste to deliver me. Be my strong rock, a castle to keep me safe. For you are my crag and my stronghold. 
For the sake of your name, lead me and guide me. Take me out of the net that they have secretly set for me, for you are my tower of strength. Into your hands I commend my spirit, for you have redeemed me, O Lord, O God of truth. And the lesson tonight is taken from Matthew's Gospel. Come to me, all you that are weary and carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest in your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. And now in the words our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. O God, your unfailing providence sustains the world we live in and the life we live. Watch over those both night and day who work while others sleep and grant that we may never forget that our common life depends upon each other's toil. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Guide us waking, O Lord, and guard us sleeping, that awake we may watch with Christ, and asleep we may rest in peace. And the canticle is the Song of Simeon. Lord, you now have set your servant free to go in peace as you have promised. For these eyes of mine have seen the Savior, whom you have prepared for all the world to see, a light to enlighten the nations, and the glory of your people Israel. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Guide us waking, O Lord, and guard us sleeping, that awake we may watch with Christ, and asleep we may rest in peace. And now let me say a prayer for you morning folk who join us as part of your, your morning discipline, your morning devotion. First of all, good morning, y'all. Ah, uh, Father, your sun rises again, O oh Lord, embracing the earth and seeking out every corner of our hearts. Warm us with the radiance of your presence. Scatter fear and sadness, sadness, that we may live your love today. In Christ's name, amen. And now, may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds and the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. The blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you now and remain with you always. Amen. Well, guys, that's going to do it for tonight. Thank you for being here. Thank you for listening to my ranting and raving. And, well, uh, I sure am glad that you're part of our gatherings. All right? And, uh, well, that's about it. I hope you have a restful night. I hope your tomorrow is better than today. And... Be safe. Be well. Love each other. Love God with all your heart. And good Lord and willing and the crick don't rise. I'll see you right here tomorrow night. Until then. Good night, Facebook.